Without a doubt, the most common question I get asked at the moment is, how do you play the same music every day? Or don't you get bored playing the same songs all the time? Firstly, I'll start off by saying that if you're asking these kind of questions, especially from a place of judgment, then playing in a show touring environment is probably not the best kind of gig for you. It definitely takes a certain type of musical personality to be excited, challenged, and fulfilled by playing the same songs all the time. Having said that though, that doesn't mean to say that there aren't some days where the absolute last thing I feel like playing is music from the show. Today, I wanna to discuss some concepts and ideas that I've developed over the years to help reduce those days of frustration as much as possible, and hopefully give you some ideas if you are going to be in a position of playing the same music every day, that you can be challenged, excited, and fulfilled to play the same song, even if it's the 745th time in a row. Let's get into it. What's up everyone? Welcome to Drummer's Perspective. My name is Ben Todd and I'm here to help broaden your scope of what's possible as a drummer. Thank you so much for tuning in today, whether you're watching here on YouTube or you're listening on the podcast, I really do appreciate you wherever you're coming in from. If you are here on YouTube though, please subscribe to the channel. That definitely does help me out. Now today I wanna to discuss something with you that's been a reality for me for the last 14 years pretty much, and that's being in a show environment where I'm playing the same music pretty much every day. Now, I said in the beginning that if you're asking the kind of questions like, how do you play the same music every day from a place of judgment, then this kind of gig is not going to be a great fit for you. However, if you are genuinely curious about what it takes to be fulfilled and happy doing that, or if you're going to be in a position yourself where you're about to jump into playing the same music every day in a particular show environment and you're a little bit anxious about being fulfilled and challenged by that, then I really hope this video will give you some ideas and insights into what it takes to be happy doing this kind of gig and to give you some relief and, and knowledge that you can still be fulfilled and excited and challenged by playing the same songs pretty much all the time. So I'm currently touring with a show playing pretty much the same music up to 10 times a week. And I want to start off by repeating something that I talked about in a previous video, which is to do with some of the challenges of long-term touring. And the first challenge that I talked about in that video was the reality of playing the same music every day. And if you haven't checked out that video, I highly suggest you, you go and take a look at that one. But what I talked about in that video was it really doesn't matter how great the music is or how big the artist is or how amazing the venues that you're going to be playing in are. If you play that music for long enough, at some point you're going to hit a bit of a wall and start to feel a little bit frustrated and maybe not as challenged as you once did in the beginning of the rehearsal period. And the reality is though, that's totally okay and totally normal. Like we're all human and we're all wired to be constantly looking for things that challenge us and fulfill us and stimulate us in new ways. What I wanna talk about today are some things that you can do when you start to feel that when you're playing the same music every day and perhaps some things you can do prior to that point to help lengthen the amount of enjoyment you get out of playing the same material day after day after day. For me, it's really something that comes in waves and honestly, these waves can be weeks or even months long sometimes. You know, some days I'm totally okay with just coming into the show and playing as consistently and accurately as I possibly can, and that feels great. I don't need anything else. It's just totally fulfilling doing that. Other days though, it is a real challenge and I have to consciously try and find ways in order to be excited and re-inspired about playing the music again. Now looking back on some ways in which I've done this, I guess I can break it down into three categories. The first one is the consistency approach. And as mentioned, that's things to do with just playing as accurately as you possibly can, making sure your time is super even, your dynamics are super even, your sound is super even, you're burying the click, all of that kind of stuff. The second approach might be changing your mental approach. And that could be things like, you know, channeling a different drummer or focusing on some visualization exercises when you're playing the music, that kind of thing. The third approach might be changing your playing approach or your technical approach. And that might be experimenting with a different kind of a technique or potentially playing open-handed or leading certain fills with your left hand or focusing on, you know, your foot technique, you know, all of that kind of stuff can be, can be really beneficial as well when you're talking about being excited about playing the same music all the time. 
Now, it needs to be said as a bit of an overarching rule uh, when you're talking about changing your approach to playing a show or you know, playing in an environment where you're there to be as consistent as you possibly can, that you have to be careful that you're not sounding any different day to day. And what I mean by that is, yeah, if you're in a show environment where you're pretty much there just to be as, as consistent day to day as you possibly can, but you're looking for ways to personally be, you know, fulfilled and challenged, changing things too much and making yourself sound different can kind of be the last thing you want to do. The techniques and, and concepts that I'm talking about today are things that potentially, well, ideally, wouldn't be even noticed by anyone else. You know, not by the audience, not by your musical director, or not even your other bandmates. But they're things that, if they're done properly to you, you can feel like you're playing a completely different show. So now I want to expand a little bit on the three different approaches that I use when I'm thinking about playing the same music every day. The first approach is the consistency approach. And, you know, 90% of the time for me, I'm completely happy uh, to use this kind of approach when I'm playing a show. You know, there's usually more than enough things to, to focus on and think about uh, when I'm trying to play the absolute best that I can. And yeah, for me, you know, the consistency thing and the accuracy thing is something that I've really, really enjoyed getting better at over my years of touring. Now, some things that, you know, you can think about when you are doing that are, you know, as mentioned, you know, making sure your time is super even, your dynamics are super even, you're burying the click, you're playing in the center of the drums, you're getting the most consistent, you know, uh, velocity hits on cymbals and, and drums and all of that kind of stuff, locking up with the, with the bass player and rhythm section. You know, there's so much just in that that um, is really important and beneficial to work on but also for you to focus on when you're playing a show and and even if it is the same music every day you know there's there's a lot to 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 think about there um the other thing about playing in a show environment which can be really great for your focus is usually there's very few distractions in your environment uh, and what i mean by that is you know where the, the gig that I have at the moment, it's in, it's in a pretty confined drum booth, um, or if you're playing like in a musical theater situation where you're in an orchestra pit or even a remote room, you know, there are usually a very other, very few other um, visual distractions or things that can pull your focus and attention away from your performance, which can be great for this kind of stuff because you're really afforded the luxury of just being able to focus, you know, as much as you can on your performance unlike a, a bar gig or an, an arena gig where there are a lot of other, you know, things that could come up and, and pull your attention away from what you're actually playing in a show environment, you can actually just really, a lot of the time, focus on, on what you're playing. The flip side of this, though, is that when you are, you know, five or six or seven months into a, a tour of playing the same music all the time and your environment isn't changing at all, it can make it feel even more, you know, Groundhog Day-like, I suppose. But as mentioned, 90% of the time, this is more than enough for me to focus on and think about when I'm, I'm playing the show, even if it is, you know, the, uh, the third or fourth year that I've been playing that specific music for. Now, when that approach starts to feel maybe not quite as fulfilling or challenging or perhaps even a little bit, you know, robotic and analytical, then it might be time to change and, and think about something else. And that's why I wanted to make this video because, uh, you know, it was certainly a reality for me at some point, you know, to, I wanted to find a way to, you know, reapproach playing the same music. And this is a, this is a way that I, I did that. And that was changing my mental approach and my mental state and some ways in which you can do that, that, you know, no one else is really going to notice, but you, uh, are, I mean, the first one is, is something I like to do where I like to imagine, you know, how would drummer X play this show or play this music? You know, how would um, Vinny Kaliuta play this show? Or how would Gary Novak play this show? Or how would Benny Greb play this show? You know, it doesn't matter really who it is. It's just someone who's going to fit that style, I suppose. Now, when I say that, I don't mean like what kind of chops would they put in or what kind of fills would they put in because, you know, that's probably going to make you sound very different from what you're actually playing and what you should be playing. But I like to think of it more like 
if Vinny Kaliuta was sitting down right now and playing the exact same thing that I was, how would that look and how would that sound? And uh, it's a really interesting, you know, kind of role playing exercise to do in your head. And it can, you know, really make you think differently about the music. And again, not in a way that's going to make you sound any different, but just it can make you think very differently. Some other ways to think about changing your mindset might even be something like, okay, what if this is the last time I'm going to play this music? You know, how would that change, you know, how you think about doing that specific gig? Another way might be, you know, if it's a reading gig, challenging yourself to memorize certain sections of the show. Vice versa, if it's not a reading gig, you know, imagine that you're seeing charts go by in your head and, you know, what that would look like visually in your mind of, of what you're playing. That can be a really interesting thing to do as well. Another way is probably more of a listening exercise, but you can just choose, you know, one instrument in the show and just really focus solely on them for the entire show. And it doesn't really matter what it is, just choose something and stick with it. And I mean, for drummers, that should be, you know, most of the time a bass player. That makes sense. But, you know, if you're playing a show and you're looking for some other ways to to, to be re-inspired and, and kind of hear the music in a different way, you know, listen to the clarinet player for the whole show if you've got a clarinet in your in your uh, ensemble or you know the keyboard player or you know one of the singers you know just just choose something and stick with it and because i think it's really easy sometimes in a show environment specifically to kind of just go on autopilot and you know in some cases forget that you're actually playing with real life you know other musicians especially if you're in a in a drum booth or in a remote room somewhere then you can kind of lose sight of of what you're actually doing and that's most of the time playing with other real uh, instrumentalists so yeah choosing a different instrument to focus on and really you know make sure that you're um feeling the time the same way or how your dynamics you know relating to their dynamics uh, are you feeling crescendos the same way are you you know feeling as mentioned you know the time the same way with certain subdivisions it can just be a really interesting thing to do and help you, you know, as, as I said, be excited and, and hear the music in a different way that's not going to necessarily change the way that you sound. A final way to change your mental state might be, you know, really think about the emotion of the certain type of music that you're playing. If it's a really, you know, heavy, aggressive, kind of full-on thing, then try and um, take on that, you know, persona and that energy when you're playing. You know, on the other hand, if it's a really mellow, chill, emotional piece that you're playing, then try and take that on as well. And, you know, that's where some like visualization kind of things can can be really uh, interesting to do. You know, imagining a, a really like aggressive scene of something playing out in your mind when you're playing this aggressive music. Or on the other hand, if it's a really you know, relaxed kind of zen you know, uh, piece, you know, you can imagine, you know, something else like a, a nature scene or, you know, being at the beach or something like that. It really doesn't matter, but just it's an interesting uh, exercise to do to, again, make you be re-inspired to hear the music differently. The third way that I like to change my approach when I'm, you know, feeling not so excited about playing uh, the same music again is to start to experiment with changing some playing techniques and, and physical approaches to what I'm actually doing. Now, it needs to be said though, that if you're going to try and incorporate a new you know technique into what you're doing, playing a show, you really wanna work on that before you <laughs> start to put it into the show, you know, because if you start experimenting with, you know, playing open-handed or, or with a different kind of, uh, action in your wrist, you know, before you've actually worked it out a little bit beforehand, you know, it can be pretty disastrous when you're trying to sound, you know, as consistent as you can, you know, day to day. But if you do get comfortable with, you know, utilizing a new technique in the practice room and you feel confident enough to be able to put it into some music that you're very confident and comfortable playing after a certain amount of time, then that can be a really, really great thing to do and help you to feel uh, re-inspired about the music again. Some things that I've been working on recently when I've been playing the show are really focusing on, you know, the time through motion concept that Dave Weckl talks about a lot. 
And, you know, I worked on that quite a bit, you know, practice wise before I started to like put it into the show so that I was at a certain level where I was confident enough to be able to to do it and know that it wasn't going to sound any different, but I could still kind of work on it, you know, in that environment. Some other things, you know, might be just making sure your feet are as relaxed as possible, you know, when you play or making sure your jaw is relaxed as possible when you play. Um, I talk about some of these concepts and ideas in, in previous videos, you know, one, the, the super easy hack to play more relaxed video or the, um, three ways to improve your time with your body video. You know, these are some of the exact same concepts that I have used in the show to make myself, you know, feel differently about the music. And again, it didn't make me sound any different, but it made me feel very different. And to me, you know, it gave me a lot of energy and, and inspiration again to continue on, you know, enjoying the music to the absolute fullest, even if it was, you know, I'm, you know, two years deep into this tour now of playing the same music pretty much every day. But utilizing these kind of, you know, change in techniques and concepts can be very, very inspiring. One final thing that I'll leave you with, which has really helped me um, at several points along uh, playing the same show for a long period of time, is to get a recording of yourself playing the show. Now, sometimes this can be challenging depending on what the show is for copyright reasons and, and so forth. And also, you know, maybe the last thing you want to do if you're getting to a point of feeling a little bit frustrated with the music is to actually take a recording of you playing that music and listen to it. But if you can get past that, it can be a really, really great thing to do to hear yourself from, you know, an audience perspective. Oftentimes you'll be surprised to hear what you're actually doing, uh, especially in a show environment or a touring environment where you're playing the same stuff all the time you can kind of trick yourself into thinking that you sound a certain way uh, where in actual reality, maybe there's some things that have actually slipped and deteriorated over a long period of time, but you haven't been conscious of. So if you're able to get a recording of yourself and actually listen to it from, you know, a bit of an analytical point of view, you know, don't be too harsh on yourself. Of course, like you're still there doing a gig and I'm sure you're still hopefully doing uh, great at that. But, you know, from, a drumming, you know, personal development, you know, wanting to get better point of view, then it can be really, really eye opening and a, a bit of a kick in the butt to make you realize like, Oh, actually, yeah, I should work on, you know, making that feel a little bit more relaxed or I, I always seem to rush, you know, that specific kind of uh, sticking on a, on a certain fill. Um, but yeah, over time, you know, you can kind of get a little bit lazy with that kind of thing in, in, a, in a, an environment where you're playing the same stuff all the time. So yeah, that's something that's really helped me as well is to be able to get a recording of, of you playing whatever you are playing, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. An interesting analogy I heard once from the great New York uh, theater and big band drummer Ray Marchica when someone asked him about playing a show, you know, year after year after year after year, the same music. He said it's much like driving a really fast car down a freeway in a sense that when you're driving that car, you're not really thinking about it. You're kind of on autopilot, but at the same point, you're in total control and you at any point can change direction or change course or take control of things and, and change it and be completely in charge of what's going on. Very similar to playing a show after a very long period of time. You can get a little bit autopilot, but in a way of you still being totally in control of everything that you're doing and being totally aware of what's going on around you. When I heard that quote, it really, really resonated with me. And I think anyone who's had any experience in playing, you know, the same music day after day after day, whether it's in a show environment or, you know, a, a tour, a pop tour or a rock tour environment, whatever it is, I think you can relate to that feeling as well. That's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed checking out this video and hearing my thoughts about how I'm able to play the same music every day and still be challenged and excited and inspired to do that. Hopefully it's given you some ideas as well if you're about to head into a position of playing the same music every day where you're a little bit anxious whether you're going to be fulfilled and, and happy doing that. I really hope that this has given you some assurance that it really is possible to, to be fulfilled and excited about playing the same songs even if you're doing it for the you know eighth, ninth, tenth month in a row. But as always, I'd really love to hear from you. Are you someone who's had experience 
playing in a show or touring environment where you're playing the same music every day? How have you found ways to keep yourself excited and inspired to do that? Please put it in the comments below. I would really love to hear it. And I know there's a lot of other people who would benefit from it as well. Thank you so much once again. Please head to drummersperspective.com and sign up to the mailing list and I'll see you next time on Drummer's Perspective. Mm -hmm.